Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the ProLock. This is their part number BP201. This is for doing IC, interchangeable core, and this is for small format interchangeable core is what this one is for. This would be for an A2 system. Uh, A2 is a reference to BEST. BEST Manufacturing has three systems. One of them is inactive. They have the A2 and then the A4 that you'll use, and it's the A3 that's inactive. And what really changes between those three systems is the increment difference between like a number five pin and a number six pin, how close those pins are together, or I should say the increment between the two is what, uh, is what dedicates them uh, as being different from each other. This is an A2 machine. A2 is by far the most prevalent system that there is. Uh, A4 is a system that is certainly uh, alive and well. I've not too long ago sold an actual best combinator for an A4 system. And the primary difference between the two is because the pins get closer, there is a better, you can, you can achieve more changes is the bottom line, more differs or change keys or theoretical key possibilities. A3 got so close between the pins, it was found that there was interchange between keys that a three would work a four, etc. On paper, it wouldn't, uh, you know, a three wouldn't work a four. A four cut wouldn't work with a three pin. But as things wear down, they found that there was cross, uh, key, there was key interchange. There was there was uh, unin there was the problem of keys working cylinders that should not work cylinders because the wear and tear on the pins uh, permitted wear and tear on the cylinder permitted sometimes that to actually uh, function another cylinder. So that system, when that was discovered, uh, was uh, sunsetted, discontinued. It still exists in the world. People still use it. But they probably just simply avoid the pitfalls of possibly um, having um, unintended key interchange. So the series of blue punches, of which Prolock has several and many, this is mine. Uh, this is the second that I've owned. Um, the Schlage punch, I've owned that Prolock blue punch for 18 years. I have cut tens of thousands of keys on it. I have replaced the springs in it. I've sent it back to the factory just recently, actually, for a full teardown and a rebuild, and it's like a brand new machine. Now, what's nice about Prolock and many other, uh, in all fairness, many other uh, locksmithing tool manufacturers is they publish the information for you to service the kit itself or the machine itself and we're going to get to that area in their catalog it's just simply a time of how much time do you have to invest to clean this to properly put it back together and to ensure that it works correctly and at the end of the day while it's not inexpensive to have the factory completely rebuild their machine with not having any available additional time to tear the machine down and bring it back to factory specs the the easy answer is to let the manufacturer do it and that's what I chose to do and that machine came back just beautiful after tens of thousands of cut keys well we have a need to cut we have a need to cut interchangeable core small format A2 system keys um, and I like a blue punch concept I like a punch concept because that's the way the factory has engineered the system to work now what do I mean by that I'm a fan of using dedicated pin kits on dedicated pieces of equipment um, because it's all designed and engineered to go together. Well, the way that best designed their keys to be cut is by punching them, not by cutting them on a, on a rotary cutter. Okay, looking at the cross section of a key and just quickly doing a drawing here to illustrate what I'm driving. If we have the tip of our key here, just making a poor representation of what a key blank might look like, and we have our rotary cutter here, just our circular carbide tool, carbide or high-speed steel. The way that the, the system was designed was to have a tool approach it this way and actually punch through or nib through to create the cut in the key. Well, a rotary cutter 
And this is, of course, an exaggerated concept. Um, it's certainly going to give you this sort of cut. Okay. Now I can cut small format keys on my code machine, on my 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 Framen. I can cut it on my Tiger Shark. Um, but but rotary cutters and again the system is designed such that it works not on a rotary cutter but to be punched okay I don't want to achieve this sort of cut I like the material to work predictably when I'm pinning cylinders I want it to work predictably and reliably the way the manufacturer intended for it to work um, you know and quite frankly if you you know it, it and again it boils down to time if you have infinite time you can kind of enjoy the study of the science of why your pins and your cut keys and your cylinders work or don't work the way they do or don't but at the end of the day when you need to just get cylinders keyed because the clients waiting okay because <laughs> you've got more lock jobs to do you just want to rely on doing it the way um, that it was designed for originally um, a best combinator is a great tool. I've reviewed those. Uh, they are um, phenomenal. The, the issue is locksmithing tools are really expensive all the time. The blue punch is a very expensive tool. The combinator happens to be more than double the cost. And while it's a very capable tool and you will be able to cut um, with swapping out parts, albeit not in expensive parts, you can cut their different keyways, their premium keyways, their peaks keyways, left and right configurations for different keys, A2, A3, A4 as well. Um, if you were to cut everything possible from best, you'd have a tool that would be several thousands of dollars. But because I do very little of any of that stuff, and this machine is highly capable of all A2 that I would bump into, meaning the keyway, and the jaws that are in the tool and how they'll hold the key. Um, this pound for pound is, I think, the way to go, which is why I chose to purchase it. Um, and of course, it's my almost 20 years of solid. Actually, I've, I've owned Blue Punch tools for, for years. My current one I've owned for about 18 years. Um, it's just so rock solid in a very portable format, uh, almost small enough to take to a job site, but I don't, you know, like doing that with expensive tools obviously um, but it was the it's the robust nature of the tool and it's the technical support at the factory when I've called them springs have broken there are two large springs that basically return the handle back up um, those fatigue they fail and I've had to replace them two or three times call the factory no problem materials on the way that time with the rebuild call the factory no problem send it in we'll take care of it uh, and that's just what you really need. If you're looking for, you know, to keep it simple, fast, easy, accurate, perfect, their MO bolts on perfectly to simple, fast, easy, accurate uh, kind of stuff. The I-Core, interchangeable core, A2, well, you know what, let's, let's just dive into the difference between A2, A3, and A4 really fast. Okay, and because you're servicing best A2, uh, or A2 systems, maybe not best. There is on our best page, our manufacturer's page, the best page, there is a A2 and A4 keys system training document, which is what I have open here. Um, I've read through this document several times. Um, the portion that I like about the document is it explains in detail their different systems, and this is the best combinator. Um, if you are if you're doing a best system, you're going to want to have a best original um, tool, uh, no doubt. If you have installed best hardware, uh, you'll want to have that tool. It will allow you to work uh, with the factory directly um, in servicing that information. All that is following here are tips on combinating and how to actually load everything. And I think I've blown past what I wanted to show you. Yeah, I did. Okay, so on about the 18th page, 
Okay. A2, A2, A4. We mentioned earlier about how the increment cha changes. So there's a 0 0.0125 increment um, between the different pins. Okay. That means that this is a two-step system, meaning that you wouldn't pin a 3 and 4 next to uh, uh, in the same chamber. You have to be two away, which is called parity. So if you have cuts in your chambers that are even, you have to stay with even cuts, and that will require you to be two steps away. And that's because of how close each pin is. If you had change key one in the four, first chamber with a one cut and change key two in the first chamber with a two cut, you can pretty much count on those keys working each other in that chamber. And obviously you don't want that. Now, an a f now this is the math behind all of that. The A4 system has an O21 increment, which allows you to be in a single step where you can have a one in a change key cut in chamber one, and next, uh, then with a two in a change key cut in chamber one, and they will work together. You have a total of six depths to deal with, even though, though over here you have ten depths to deal with. Ten depths to deal with is double step, so how many actual cuts can you use? Well, ten divided by two, because you have to be two away, that's five. Over here you have six. So that additional factor, that additional step that you create in a single step A4 system, okay, is going to allow you to um, operate at a substantially higher number of change keys. Okay. Now, since we're on this page, how is this, how is this actually achieved? How can you achieve 16,000 uh, total key codes in a 7-pin system? Well, let's take a look. In a 7-pin system, you'll have a total of 7 pins. Okay. In through each of these, we'll do an A2 system. In through each of these, if you recall, there were 10 cuts, 0 through 9. Well, that's 10. But you can only use 5 of those cuts because you have to observe parity. You can use odd numbers, 0, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, or 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Let's assume that you're going to take one of those out for your master key. That will leave you with four in each of your chambers. You have seven chambers. Um, okay, you have seven. You have you have seven chambers. Now, the math behind that. If you recall, we were getting 16,384 cuts, uh, total key codes. How that's achieved is we've got five, we've got, a, we've got 10 depths. It's a two-step system, which means we've got a total of five available we can use. You have to hold one out because let's imagine that there's going to be a top master key up here. So if the top master key here, let's write it down here, even though it would go at the top. If that's a three... In here, you can only use a 1, 5, 7, or 9. That's 4. Now, here's the math. You've got 7 pins, 4, 4 to the 7th power is indeed 16,384. Why an A4 system is more potent is because the same logic, except that now we have a 6-pin system, we're going to take one of those out because we're not going to use the master key bidding in a chamber. Now that becomes 5 to the 7th. 5 to the 7th power is going to be 78,125 keys.
Okay, and that's where that comes in. Now, what happened with our A3 system? Oh my goodness. Okay, they took that 021 increment and decreased it to 018, so the pins were closer, and they squeezed a seven-step system in here. So now what's six to the seventh power? Well, of course, you guessed it. It's this. But they found that they had key interchange. In fact, any uh, the, the term that's used is any increment difference smaller than 023 you can count on key interchange, okay? And that, of course, depends on the manufacturer as well. So are you using an A2 system or an A3 system or an A4 system? This is the math behind it. Um, and of course, having the right key machine is part and parcel of cutting the keys because now you understand where the machine is cutting physically on the blade is dependent on the increment. If you tell it to cut me a 4 in an A2 system, well a 4 in an A4 system is going to be a very different depth cut, which is called the root depth. You certainly have, you know, you know how long your pin is, but a root, a root depth, just a really poor key blank here, Okay, your blade height is going to be this. That's your blade height. But your root depth, again, just a, I'm sorry, this is a poor key blank. Here's a cut. Your root depth is that. So the root depth, basically here, the length of the pin that you install is going to sit in here, obviously, right? But the root depth is what's also referred to very often. That's your pin length, but your, your cut is going to be considered the root depth. Um, you can see when your increments are different how that number is going to change. So that's why the machine has to be physically different to handle different instances of what system that you're cutting. Okay, let's move on to the next step of this video. Now this part of the video is going to talk about the link below this video to the, I guess they call this installation instructions and it's all of that and more. The document that's down below is a complete and total overview of the Blue Punch system, the BP201 system. Um, and as you scroll through, you can read the overview of the history of the uh, Blue Punch machine, etc. Obviously a look at what it is. I don't know, you know, I'm guessing that they're cutting Schlage C on this, or Schlage on this. Um, the tool does not include this handy case. Um, so when you purchase it, you're not getting this case, which I've never bought a case. Um, if I went to job sites, I would certainly own the case because otherwise you're lugging around the tool in its original cardboard box, which you would like to save because if you ever had to ship it back, you could at least put it back in that box. And I would recommend putting that into another box and, of course, shipping it fully insured. Um, if I was going to job sites, so I would certainly have this. You've got the tool and then you've got the slide bar that's here. That's all that you have with this machine. Um, now, here's where they talk about the different varieties of what they're cutting, um, the different key types. We're focused here in the BP201 IC, IC A2. Now the A2 is going to cut best small format IC, Falcon small format, Arrow small format, and that's because Falcon and Arrow are clones of the best. A, the keyways A through R, TA through TE, and W, and you can see the rest, it will exclude uh, InstaKey is something manufactured by Falcon um, for InstaKey, and uh, if you need InstaKey, you'd contact them directly. I don't know much about it, um, not important in this video. The reason that they're excluding these things is because the, the profile of the key blank 
if we looked at a key blank kind of in cross section you know if I was to really exaggerate how poor my talents you know you've got a keyway laying on its side well your blue punch needs to be able to pinch in and grab the thing okay you got to be able to grab as you tighten it down you've got to be able to grab it in such a way that you've got it securely positioned and referenced off of its reference groove these the this portion of the of the holder is going to hit a certain reference groove um, to keep the key in position uh, those other key blanks have a reference groove or a profile that the standard f fixturing in the machine itself will not accurately keep it in position in the proper location so that's why you have these exclusions or, or these qualifications these are the key ways we can cut now keep in mind in the A through R range you've got a couple of dozen keys uh, keyways that are there A is the most common keyway from best B is very common they're all common um, you know it doesn't uh, really so much of course matter but that's what you're dealing with um, A3 and we talked about why you'll need different systems for that as well. Uh, the same exclusions are going to be in effect here for the A3 and A4 system because really all they're doing is changing the depth every time that you kerchunk the machine and you cut a key and it then advances to the next space. So your depth and your spacing will be dependent on A2 and A3 requirements. Um, as you go through here, you can see the other machines. I would say that cutting Corbin is going to be fairly common to do depending on the type of locksmithing that you do if you have primarily residential clients or primarily commercial clients you know if you're doing primarily residential I would think Quickset and Schlage is going to be really important to you um, I would also think that Westlock might be important as well uh, to get into if you're doing obviously commercial clients yeah you could have some Corbin most certainly uh, obviously IC Schlage Everest B this is their small format um, restricted keyways. Uh, you have their Everest D, which is a restricted keyway as well. Um, if you've got a client that you service with restricted Everest B or D, yeah, you probably very likely want those machines. Um, these reverse keyways are very uncommon, uh, at least in my experience. I know that people have them, I know that installations have them, and they do so because they are technically, they are a restricted product, meaning you have to produce paperwork to obtain these keys. So there's a paper trail. Uh, if you try to obtain that key, there's going to be a paper trail of it. Um, here's the jaw assembly we were talking about and why those exclusions occur on the different, or why they're qualifying the different keyways. Uh, your code bar, you know, this is the business end. The code bar sets the positioning of the dot, of the, of the, punch the die carriage is what moves back and forth according to the spacing of the system okay inserting the key we're gonna go over the top jaw and your bottom jaw that all conspires to hold I'm sorry I'm going here I'm going here to hold the key in its reference groove or register groove handle what's nice is they have a key gauge right in front of it so you can slide your key in and make sure that your cut is what you need or you say oh gosh what did I just cut I don't recall um, you can do that and as you slide through the catalog they'll get into the particular system so we'll go right to the I core the BP201 IC A2 interchangeable core all of this we've already talked about the A3 and A4 code bars can be purchased separately depth ad adjustment will be necessary when changing the code bars um, I had said earlier about the spacing needing to be changed. I don't believe you need to change the spacing at all. Uh, I think the spacing on A2, 3, and 4 are all the same spacing. In fact, I know that it is. Uh, forgive me. It, it's certainly the same spacing because you have the same cores regardless of the system that you're running through it, meaning the first cut, which is the tip of the key to the first cut, 
um, there's a, that's a specific dimension. Then every successive cut is a specific center to center dimension, which stays constant all the way down. Um, the length of the of the of the blade, whether you're cutting five, six, or seven pin, six and seven pin is of course most common. Five pin does exist. Um, This machine is designed to use factory original key blanks or high quality key blanks from a reliable aftermarket manufacturer. Uh, if the machine is not cutting accurately, simply space and uh, simple space and depth adjustments are outlined as well. Call the ProLock factory for further technical assistance. As I said, they're excellent with that. Um, the, the instructions for using the tool are literally boiled down to here and you don't even need that many. Install the code bar from left of uh, machine. Uh, we're going to go over that in a moment. With the handle up, move the die carriage to the far right, which is basically setting it in the position ready to make the first cut. Loosen the top jaw with the L handle counterclockwise. Place the key in the jaw from the left side. Locate top jaw in the bottom milled groove of the key. There's really only one way that it's going to fit inside of there to where it's going to actually cut correctly. If, you, if you're sticking it in and it doesn't look flat and straight, just analyze what, how you're ins inserting it. It just needs to be inserted correctly. Now what's interesting is your key will go in on the left side, whereas with the Schlage machine, and uh, well, let's just look at Quickset. Uh, Quickset is obviously from the left side as well, but Schlage is from the right side of the machine. Okay, I don't know why Quickset would be different. It obviously has to do with how the uh, how the carriage spaces. That's that's the bottom line. You, so you're inserting it from the left, and you're moving the die carriage to the left so that you can get your first cut here because it's bow to tip. Schlage is going to be right to right. Place the key in from the right and then move your carriage to the right because that will give you your first cut. So what they're saying on the IC is move your insert your key from the left and then move your carriage to the far right. Now why is it why is it not left left or right right? Well the reason it's different is because you're inserting it from the left, you're moving your carriage to the right because we want our first cut to be up here because why? Small format is tip to bow. Cuts one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whereas with Schlage or Quickset or so many others, cut one, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's bow to tip. That's the difference. Note I see cuts tip to bow. To cut key, move the code bar to the cut uh, depth number desired for the first position. Depress the handle all the way through in a quick downward motion. I don't move quick, but, but do move swift and steady and sure and surely uh, with assuredness of going through the workpiece. You don't want to deform it. You want to punch through it. Um, die carriage automatically indexes to the next cut position as the handle returns to the upright position. So your carriage, when you go from cut one to cut two, this is going to then next position, position itself until it gets through all of the possible cuts that you would have. Select depth of the second position, cut and repeat. Remove the key, check the depth in the, in the key gauge in the front of your machine, and then test your cylinder. So yeah, there you go. Um, I found when I sent my machine back that it had 18 years of just general atmospheric exposure micro dust particles. There's obviously grease. There's lubricant inside the tool. Over the years it collects. Many of those years it was not kept in its box and just kept on the key bench. So exposed to whatever particulate would be in the air. In the air. I found that the carriage was not centering accurately in cuts uh, four, five, four, 4 and 5 or 3, 4 and 5. Uh, 4, 5 and 6. They were the center to center was not accurate and obviously it needed to be cleaned however I didn't know if something needed to be replaced which is again and then time which is why I sent it back to the factory so right there we've just exhausted everything you need to know to make this machine work
getting through the rest, you'll see the other systems. A basic operation is clearly indicated here. This is going to be a Schlage system loaded on the right, carriage pushed to the right. Now, this document, we're not going to go over spacing adjustments. We're not going to go over uh, ad ad adjusting for depth. That is a detailed uh, assembly and teardown that you can do in your, uh, you can review that uh, should you need to. I found that this, again, factory rebuild was the way for me to go, and it was well worth the money. Not inexpensive, but you basically get a brand new machine. Um, obviously, some sales and marketing stuff here at the at the back end. Now, let, let's move to unbox this machine. It's never come out of the box. I've never opened it. It just came in yesterday. Let's pull it out and see what it looks like. Now to the unboxing of the tool, I'm going to very carefully remove the copper staples because I'm going to use this box again in the future. If I ever need to send it back, I will certainly send it back to the factory in this box because this box was certainly tested uh, to make sure that it would, it was tested in the sense that if you were to have some sort of a situation with the carrier when shipping it and, the, and it became damaged, this packaging, the box, the strength of the box, the, the internal support structures for the tool have certainly been found to be in compliance with the carrier's requirements so that the, the carrier, if this were to become damaged in transit, the carrier could not come back and say it was improperly packaged very crucial. If you give the FedExes and the UPSs in the world the ability to determine that it was improperly packaged, they will do so. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. Word to the wise, over package your stuff. Um, it is not too much to ask that we take precautions on very expensive tools or anything that you're shipping to give the key machine every fighting chance to arrive to where it has to arrive undamaged unblemished okay you're going to want to save all of this i have all of my original packaging for my tool from about 2002 top foam uh, like any good uh, locksmithing company, lots of sales and marketing data that they send every single time. And there's the business end of our, our, our video here. I've unboxed a lot of machines, a lot of good quality key machines, and it's always fun because you really get to revel in the engineering prowess of whoever created you know, the tool itself. So we're going to put this here, we're going to put the key machine, we'll leave it sit right here. Okay. Um, you know, a really great document, a really consolidated, concise ProLock document going over all their tools. You know, we save the original paperwork when it comes. This is incredibly important <clears throat> um, to register the key machine. I, I, um, you know, I should have registered my air conditioning unit when I had it installed five years ago. I didn't. <laughs> because I don't care about that. <laughs> but I care about my key machine, okay? <laughs> um, register the tool because you call the factory for service. They want to pull up <clears throat> the life history of the machine, the, the chain of custody. And being able, them being able to pull up that machine, know who, who it was sold to, and the history of the machine works to your benefit. I do very much encourage that you... Uh, serial numbers on that card, and it's here as well. Uh, register your machine. You know, it's how you make a living. Um, the air conditioning doesn't strike me as, <laughs> as important. Okay, so there will always be a test key 
in the machine when it comes. Um, any key machine, really. And of course, what we have here is the um, our space bar with a rubber band put down to, or a code bar with a rubber band put down to the top of the handle. And I'm going to just simply pull that off. Okay. I would have packaged that separately. I'm going to tip that camera down so we can actually see what we're working on here a little bit better. Their cut key is here. Your serial number is on the nameplate as well, at least my serial number. Okay. This has no code bar installed, so your carrot, your depth, is cut well, is positioned well away from the cuts of the key. It's at the uh, beginning of its cutting sequence. Okay, we'll do that again just to see how the carriage moves if you keep your eyes on the carriage. Okay, you can see how it ratcheted over. I'm going to remove this key by just moving that L handle. And then I can slide the key out. Okay. That's that original cut key. So the point of the matter is you would be able to... Um, I don't know what they cut that to. It's not indicated here anywhere um, what it was cut to. Uh, it pro it may not matter. It's it's their it's it's the, it's Prolock's ability to be able to cut the key on the machine. Go back to the manufacturer's original specifications and measure the root depth from the bottom of the blade to the bottom of the cut, and that will tell them if it's cutting accurately because that's how that's measured. Um, Inserting the code bar is just as simple as sliding it in here. Now, as you slide the code bar in and out, if you'll notice, the jaw assembly, what's well, right between my fingers, as I move it to a shallower depth, and then I move it to deeper depths, you can see how that will move that carriage in and out. As I work the machine, the, the, the carriage goes from position one all the way through its different positions. Now when I cut a machine on this, when I cut keys, I always cut with being right-handed. I'll use my left hand to control the carriage with my hand or my finger. I don't want it being so tough on the tool, I, I kind of just let the finger take some of the use and abuse um, and not have it ratchet so far. The turning of the L handle, which is pointed towards you, okay, our key is going to go in right here. And as I turn that L handle, you can see how it compresses down a little bit. It closes up and that's what's going to clamp your key firmly in place. If you ever needed to reposition the handle in relationship to where it's grabbing, you can lift this up and then reposition it and it will snap back down. There should be never really any reason to do that. Okay. Yeah, it you, you can't see it move because the, because it's spring loaded, but it is indeed where it belongs. It's easier when we have a key installed, which we will. The register groove 
that hook edge to the top jaw in the front of the tool is biting right into this initial register groove. Well, I'm, you know, a register groove would be a reference point. I'm just saying the term register groove as a reference point. It's into this milling that's here. It's going to bite right into here. And that's going to keep it really clamped down in place. Um, turn the tool around. Uh, this tool weighs about 12 pounds, or at least it does with its packaging. As I install that, doing it backwards, I have my L handle to the left. I've rotated it uh, uh, clockwise to open up the jaw, and then I can push my key blank. Forgive me. I have it rotated counterclockwise. It's to the right to tighten it, forgive me, or it's clockwise to tighten it. I have it opened up. I'll just push my key. Oop. Okay, all the way to where it stops. Now, as we know, or maybe we don't, this is a tipped stop key. That's the stop on the key. Now, on a regular bow to tip key, you'll have a shoulder stop. On your Schlage key or quick set, there's going to be a shoulder here. Well, there's no shoulder on you know small format like this. So literally in the key care in the key jaw assembly there is a tip stop that's in there that I can demonstrate here. As I push the key into my jaw assembly you'll see that it stops can't push it in any further. That's because it's definitely hitting that stop. Once you have the key in position, hold the key, push it, and then tighten. You're going to turn that clockwise, and it will then tighten the key to the point where it's not going to move. And at that point, you are definitely ready to cut your first key. Loosening, in it, loosening counterclockwise, pulling the key blank out. Inserting your next key blank until it stops. Tightening that clockwise. Carriage to the right. Carriage to the right because this is tip to bow in small format. Okay, and we want our cutter as close to the tip as possible, looking right in here. Not much to see there, I apologize, but that's where it's positioned. Now, we're going to get a blank and we're going to cut a key now. We do here indeed have a high quality key blank from a reliable manufacturer, Kaba Ilko, would be of course name quite synonymous with all of that. This will work just swell. We have an A keyway. We're doing an A system. This cut, is, this key is going to be part of the system that we're cutting for this client. Um, the, so we're going to load the key blank as we did earlier. I'm going to tighten the carriage. Okay. Now, uh, let's attempt to do this in this sort of fashion. The cut, the key that we're going to cut is six seven zero one two five eight. So that's a tip to bow cut. The first cut is our six. We're going to set our slide bar to six. Our key is in. Our carriage is to the right. We're loading from the left. We're pushing our carriage to the right. I'm going to, I've got my, my code bar set to six. Okay, I'm going to remove that key now. We're going to take a look at that six cut. That's what a six cut is going to look like. Okay, now as per the installation instructions, I can slide this into my key gauge and I can see that it definitely stops at a six. So 
slide it in and it will stop at the shoulder of the six. So it's stopping right under the six and won't go any farther because of that step shoulder progression. Now let's take it a step further. We know that we've got a six. And again, that cut on that key is, let's get the camera to focus on us here, flat bottomed, exactly the way the factory intended it to be, and not matching the curve of a rotary cutter. Let's pull up a depth and spacing chart for a six cut for best. Okay. Now let's pause the we'll pause the video and I'll get a closer look. What I want to do is put a caliper on that six cut and I want to know exactly how accurate it is. Now in our website, I have a link to manufacturers. And then if you go to HPC, who makes the code machine, the, 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 the code max, or blitz machine, I have on their page the depth and spacing chart by manufacturer. Let's pull that document up and then control F on your keyboard for best. Best Aero Falcon A2 system. Just a handy reference. You can find this information from best as well. So we're going to be, de this looks very complicated, but it's really not. Um, Spaces are not important. That's the tip to the first cut. It's 0.088 then every successive cut. And you'll notice that this increment, which appears to be 150, is going to be the same between 3 and 4. Add 150 to 4, you'll get 5. Your depths. Now, we talked earlier about your depth. A zero depth is 0.318. It's basically 5 sixteenths. So a zero, which is a very shallow cut, is 0.318. If we look over here at a nine cut, which is a very deep cut, it's less. It's 0.205. That's because we're talking again about the root depth. And again, the root depth is... The root depth is from the bottom of the blade. Okay, you get the picture. This is the root depth. Okay, This is the length of the pin that you'll insert, and you take all of this together, and you'll get what's called the the effective plug diameter. That is the number where you take the root depth and the pin, and you'll have a nominal number. Um, and that you can study. Uh, Schlage has an effective plug diameter of 0.5 inch, 0 0.500. If you took the root depth of a cut and added the length of its pin, you'll get 0.5. So we're dealing in root depths here. Okay. Um, we just cut a six cut. So the six cut should be 243 thousandths. Okay. So the time of... Um, the time of reckoning has become. Let's put our caliper on this cut and see what it is. We have my caliper. This is how you're going to know. Now, you, now, now it's not going to be exact. We sure hope that it's incredibly accurate. But we're dealing with 0.243. And I put my caliper on here. I need to pull out my larger tool for this. 0.243. Nice. People, Prolock does a good job. So I'm putting my caliper from the root to the bottom of the cut. Let's see if I can do that backwards for, for, for you to be able to see that. 0.243 is what the manufacturer wants to see from us. 0.244. I mean, just beautiful. 0.244. You can definitely count on a 0 0.001 as being well within the toler within the margin. So what have we done? We've determined. We've we've verified the integrity of the cut. 
the next thing of course to do would be to cut the entire key and then check the spacing. Checking the spacing is harder to do with a caliper because it's center to center of the, of the cuts of the key. So that depth and spacing, space one is 0 .088 from here to the center of that first cut. Then it's another 150 thousandths or 0.238 to the second cut and all the way to the seventh cut or whatever you're cutting. Um, if I was going to check, check de uh, spacing, and the reason I knew my Schlage machine was not cutting correctly is because when I inserted the key blank into the cylinder plug and then dropped the pins, the, the pins one and two were good, were spot on. Three was a little, little high, like, oh, that's weird. Four was high. Five was like, whoa, something's off. Because what's happening is the centers aren't correct, and the pin is actually riding on the side cut not on the bottom and in systems like this that pin will ride on the on the bottom of the cut other manufacturers like medico their pins actually rest on the side cuts um, in a very 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 intelligent engineered way to absolutely reduce wear uh, and tear on pins and keys by having those pins rest on the sides of the cut well not so with this system um, so that's how I know, and when I will check the spacing, I'm going to know immediately when I cut the rest of this key and stick it in my cylinder and try to pin it, if I'm having trouble um, with the key working, it could be the spacing. So at that point, I would have to investigate the spacing of what's happening. So a lot of important documentation here. So I'm going to go back and cut the rest of that key blank and then continue on with this lock job. Um, an incredibly robust, easy to get along with tool. The springs that I had mentioned earlier are these, are, are seen here and here. I've actually broken those a couple of times. Um, they've broken a couple of times, but be mindful on that tool. When I say I cut thousands of keys, I probably said tens of thousands, easily tens of thousands of keys, easily. And what's really great is the punch and die have never been changed and they cut super perfectly, okay? I can't, I'm a, I'm a big fan of ProLock. Now there is, and I hope it comes through in this video, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can uh, review not only all of the ProLock products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as link to the full product catalog. Um, there's the locksmithing product catalog and then there's another catalog called Entry Armor. Entry armor is a lot of security hardware. U-shaped door reinforcing wraparound plates, latch protectors, sliding door locks, window door locks, a, a, a number of other security related hardware that dovetails perfectly into what the locksmith, the practicing locksmith needs to service his client base. So it goes hand in hand. They also have a line of key blanks as well. I think they're called California keys. Yeah, California keychains. It, it's on their box. Um, I've never used any of their key blanks. I imagine they're very high quality. But that link to the product catalog um, is really an important document uh, as a practicing locksmith, uh, if you are, because you'll see all of their tools. Um, I have lots of personal experience with the Blue Punch. Uh, in terms of their other tools used for prepping doors for locks, I've never used their, their, any of their tools. Uh, there are cutters to do an 86 edge, uh, to prep holes into doors, um, uh, lock installation kits. I've never used any of that stuff, and it's not that. And, and I have, I have, I have personally machined wood doors tens of thousands of times. Not an exaggeration. Um, much of it by CNC equipment, uh, other just by hand. I've owned locksmithing installation kits by um, Westlock, Quickset, Classic engineering, um, obviously the major manufacturings, the Prolox make them as well. But when I'm doing just a 161 prep, honestly, I'm using a bimetal hole saw, two and an eighth. I'm using a one inch spade bit, and I'm using a couple of, I'm using a Porter cable template for the edge and then my router. I find that to be incredibly inexpensive, quick, fast, easy, reliable. However, there are many people that would take the position that the lock installation kit or jig is 
an irreplaceable piece. And I find that my opinion of not preferring that tool to be in the minority, there are people that swear by these um, that are quite frankly lost without the without having their, their tool uh, being able to, to be used to prep their, their lock holes. Um, I would conclude that if their lock installation tools are anywhere near the quality of their key, their blue punch machine, um, that they would be exceptional tools. So scrolling through that lock, that product catalog will show you all that. It will also bleed into the entry armor catalog, and you might want to look at that stuff too, because they have some solutions that are no longer easy to get your hands on. They have, they mimic mag uh, security and, and some of the stuff they do. It's a name, if you're a locksmith, you'll certainly know the name mag. Well, they've been out of business since probably 2012 maybe. Um, something in that range. Um, the father who built the business uh, passed away, and the son who uh, was trained in a very different industry did not want to run. Did not want to run a manufacturing plant. Uh, very understandable. And so Mag went away uh, forever. Locksmithing tools are also in there. Uh, if you're working on lists, uh, safes as well, you'll find uh, in there. And then there are California keychains right at the back. Uh, a nice offering of a variety of different key tags. Uh, lanyards, other ways uh, to work with key management, uh, obviously split key rings, give away little key rings as well, they're all there. Um, and I would suggest that you review all of that because my experience with working with the factory is stellar and I think that they deserve a look when it comes to not only the machine that you can't get from anywhere else, look at the stuff that you have choices on. Um, I, I, in my opinion they deserve that. So any questions on the Prolock BP201 for a ICA2 system or any other ProLock uh, piece of equipment or hardware, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.